It's Wednesday, December 9th, and this is now on HNN. There will be impact on students. We'll hear from the school superintendent about plans to bring students back to campus and the impact of looming budget cuts. The Pentagon is set to begin distributing the coronavirus vaccine at 16 sites around the world, including one on Oahu. In my judgment, there's no question that he is the right person for this job. President-elect Joe Biden introduces his pick for Secretary of Defense, but the nominee faces a major hurdle in the confirmation process. Plus, what were the top Google searches of 2020? These stories and more coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon, everyone. Aloha and welcome inside This Is Now. Jonathan is on a break today. I'm Ian Shering along with Ashley Nagaoka. We're learning more about uh, the state's plan for Hawaii's public school students over the second half of next year. Superintendent Christina Kishimoto says 75% of the state's public school students have opted for blended learning. That means they'll be back on campus at some point. So we interviewed the superintendent this morning and asked a simple question, is it a top priority to get Hawaii students back into the classrooms? Here's what she had to say. It, it absolutely is. Uh, in fact, we have um, a leadership meeting today to talk about and finalize our quarter three uh, approach that we want to take. Uh, some of our schools are uh, already set up to have uh, an increase of uh, grades or groups of students to come in. Uh, that is a high priority for me because I know that based on quarter two feedback and uh, how students are progressing, their, their progress reports, that's really what they are. They're, they're not end grades yet. Um, uh, we are seeing that there are a number of students who are not successful through distance learning. And we also know there are uh, just the social emotional supports that students need in being with peers, being with adults, um, having that connection. And so we want to make that happen and happen safely uh, for our students. Reopening campuses won't be without challenges. Kishimoto says budget cuts brought on by the pandemic are going to happen and that it's inevitable that those cuts will impact students and teachers. So schools are already planning for and are finalizing their plans in the next two weeks uh, to account for a 10% cut to their budget. Uh, the 10% cut uh, is, is, uh, is not reflective of the total impact because on top of the 10% the cut, uh, centralized services that are actually passed through to the school is what comes from the state level cuts as well. So schools are gonna have anywhere from, you know, 12 up to 18% cut essentially to their school budget or their school services. Uh, most of the funds that are at the state level are actually allocated to the school. So that's really important also for the community to understand how detrimental this is going to be uh, to the school level. You can watch our entire interview with the superintendent on our website or any of our streaming platforms. Happening today, the state Senate COVID committee will meet to discuss the safe travels program. They're scheduled to hear from the person who spearheaded that program, Lieutenant Charlie. Governor Josh Green, as well as all four of Hawaii's mayors. Mayors Kawakami, Victorino, and Caldwell have been critical of Green's plan, but new Hawaii County Mayor Mitch Roth believes that the program is working. Well, it seems to be very effective. Uh, they've, you know, I think they've caught about a case every day. I mean, it's a lot of money for, for what we're getting, but... You know, the safe travels together with that, I think, has been very effective. The Senate committee meeting is set to start at 1 o'clock this afternoon and will be live streamed on YouTube and available on Olelo Channel 49. The Pentagon says it may start distributing the coronavirus vaccine as early as next week. Of course, that's if the FDA grants emergency use authorization to Pfizer. The initial rollout will begin with 44,000 doses going to 16 military locations around the world. One of them is the Tripler Army Medical Center. 
Officials chose these locations because they can store the vaccines in ultra cold temperatures. They also took into account the number of people who are eligible to receive the shots. Those first doses will go to health care providers along with emergency services and public safety personnel. The state says 80,000 doses of the COVID vaccine are slated to arrive in Hawaii this month. Department of Health officials say it will be free to residents. The state's vaccine distribution plan is expected to be unveiled sometime this week. As the state works to bring the vaccine to Hawaii, doctors are facing another daunting challenge, convincing people to get their shots. Chelsea Davis reports. The University of Hawaii surveyed more than 600 people around the state. And while the majority of them expect the severity of the pandemic to become worse, most say they don't plan on getting the vaccine when it becomes available. The state says it's already placed an order for nearly 5,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine, which could arrive by the end of the month. But skepticism is growing. A University of Hawaii survey found just 44% of Hawaii residents plan to get the shot. One of the big takeaways is that actually the number of people who report that they'll definitely get the vaccine has declined by seven percentage points since we asked this question in August, which is a little bit surprising. That's not surprising to Kim Hain, Children's Health Defense Hawaii chapter president. They've been demonstrating for weeks vaccine is liability free. If it injures you, um, the manufacturers and the providers are protected under what's called the PrEP Act. So you're out of luck. You can't sue them. So say they're not forcing it on us. Um, they're not mandating it, yet you won't be able to fly in an airplane or you won't be able to get your health insurance. Today, the FDA said the Pfizer vaccine is both safe and effective, and it would likely approve the first U.S. inoculation within days. In Britain, the vaccines are already being given. 90-year-old Maggie Keenan is the first in the world to get it. So wonderful, really. Yeah. But in Hawaii, the lieutenant governor thinks the skepticism over the vaccine will wear off once it becomes more widespread. I think actually at the end of the day, we'll have 70 to 80 percent of all people get a vaccination if I had to make a prediction uh, because people will see the benefit as long as it's safe. Experts say herd immunity will likely be achieved when 60 to 70 percent of people in a community are vaccinated, but in Hawaii and the nation may not reach that point until next summer. Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. As the U.S. waits for a green light from the FDA, Canada announced this morning that it has approved Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Canada could get about 250,000 doses by the end of the month and 4 million doses by March. In total, the Canadian government ordered 20 million doses, which is enough to vaccinate 10 million people. This comes just one week after the UK became the first country to give Pfizer the green light. They began vaccinating residents on Monday. British officials are telling people not to get that Pfizer vaccine if they have a history of severe allergic reactions. They say two people had adverse reactions after getting the shots yesterday, which was the first day of mass vaccinations in Britain. Officials say both of them are recovering well. In other news, while lawmakers and the White House grapple over a new COVID relief bill, President-elect Joe Biden is adding a key member to his cabinet. Skylar Henry reports from the White House. President-elect Joe Biden introduced retired Army General Lloyd Austin as his pick for defense secretary. In my judgment, there's no question that he is the right person for this job. Austin has been out of military service less than seven years. That's how long uniformed commanders are required to wait before they take top civilian jobs at the Pentagon. Austin will need Congress to pass a waiver exempting him. And so I come to this role, this new role, as a, as a civilian leader. With military experience, to be sure, but also with a deep appreciation and reverence for the prevailing wisdom of civilian control of our military. Mr. Biden is also working to confront the pandemic when he takes office. He wants 100 million vaccines given to Americans in his first 100 days. That's the same number promised by the Trump administration. We're collaborating very closely with the Biden transition team in terms of making sure that planning is in effect. President Trump and his campaign remain focused on overturning the election results, but have lost the first case to reach the Supreme Court.
In one short sentence, the court denied a Republican challenge to the vote in Pennsylvania. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are still trying to find common ground on a new COVID relief bill. What I recommend is we set aside liability and set aside state and local and pass those things that we can agree on. Senator McConnell has put the jobs of firefighters, ambulance workers, sanitation officers, police officers in jeopardy. Democrats say any bill needs to include money for state and local governments. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Hawaii has certified our election results. Officials re official results show that President-elect Biden won 63 percent of the votes. President Trump received 34 percent. Hawaii has four electoral college electors. They formally cast their votes for president on Monday. New at noon, the Federal Trade Commission is asking a federal court to order Facebook to sell off its Instagram and WhatsApp messaging services as the FTC and 48 states are suing the social media giant for allegedly using its market power to crush competitors. The FTC also wants to require Facebook to seek prior notice and approval for future mergers and acquisitions. Facebook did not have immediate comment. Just in, the City Parks Department says a water main break at Kaneohe District Park is impacting public services. The park itself is open, but the pool, the gym, and the comfort station near the baseball field are all closed. The bathroom on the other side of the park, near the skate park, is still open. An update to a story we broke to you yesterday on First at Four. Honolulu police say a 64-year-old man involved in a work-related accident in Kalihi has died. First responders were called out to Mokawea Street around 2.20 yesterday afternoon after a large crate fell on the man. We're told he worked for Kano Trucking. Chad Daybill says he wants to be tried in a different city. His attorney told a judge that he cannot get a fair trial in East Idaho because of local media coverage. The Idaho man is charged in connection with the disappearance of his stepchildren. Seven-year-old J.J. Vallow and 17-year-old Tylee Ryan disappeared in September of 2019. Their remains were later found at Daybell's property in June. Daybell married their mother, Lori Vallow, on Kauai. She was arrested on the island earlier this year and has also been charged in the case. To mark the 40th anniversary of the death of John Lennon, Hawaii News Now produced a documentary on the Hawaii man who traveled to New York City and pulled the trigger. Here's an excerpt of what happened on that fateful night. December 8, 1980, was one of the darkest nights of my life. I had come home by bus from work, fixed dinner, and plopped on the sofa. I was watching Little House on the Prairie when suddenly words ran across the bottom of the screen, like a ticker tape. John Lennon had, has been shot in New York City. I just knew it was Mark. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The death of a man who sang and played the guitar overshadows the news from Poland around in Washington tonight. Former Beatle John Lennon, who was 40, was shot and killed outside his luxury apartment in New York. The alleged killer is an unemployed security guard and printer who had lived in Hawaii. News of Lennon's death touched off a wave of shock and mourning around the world. And within two minutes of time I got there, they brought out Lennon. He was, he was limp. Um, he had blood coming out the side of his mouth. Uh, he had his glasses on, and there were maybe five or six um, uh, police officers holding him, uh, carrying him, putting him in the back seat of a car. And very quickly, Yoko was with him. Lennon had been shot four times. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. Chapman remained at the scene until he was picked up by police. They brought from this kind of inside area, inside the gate. Um, uh, they were scuffling with the guy and brought him out. And he was handcuffed behind his back. That apparently was the man that, that, that shot him. The Dakota's doorman yelled, Do you know what you just did? And Chapman responded calmly, his face covered with Lennon's blood. I just shot John Lennon. I Just Shot John Lennon, the Mark David Chapman story is available now on all of Hawaii News Now's digital platforms.
Let's get now to the latest numbers from the State Department of Health. The State Health Department is reporting 80 new cases today and four new COVID-related deaths. The breakdown of new cases by island show 12 on the Big Island, one on Kauai, 15 on Maui, 45 on Oahu, and seven diagnosed out of state. And this just in, Kauai is independently reporting two more cases. Officials say they are both adult male residents with confirmed community-acquired infection. Now let's take you outside now for a look at the weather. A little cloudy, but I think it's going to clear up a little bit according to our friend Guy Hagi. Here he is with the forecast. Aloha on this Wednesday. We've got a big storm up to our north. It's going to po basically push away the trade winds today and tomorrow. Trade winds not expected back until Friday. It's also pulling up a little bit of moisture on Kauai and Oahu, uh, but those showers are of the light variety. Really, we're not expecting a whole lot of rain until maybe the afternoon. Because of the light winds produced by that storm system, we could get some afternoon clouds and a few afternoon showers, maybe even a few afternoon downpours, but the rain will not be widespread. High temperature today running to about 85 degrees. And again, that we could see some spotty showers in the afternoon hours. And the high surf alerts have been, have been canceled. There's still a small craft advisory for parts of the state. So the waves are on the way down, not not really 8 to 12 feet It's definitely declining, but it's good enough to run the Billabong Pipeline Masters. It's on today and watch out a small little pulse is due into the South Shore, some off season stuff, maybe some fun waves rolling into Waikiki and Alamona, but there could be some box jellyfish as well. So again, light winds today and tomorrow, maybe some afternoon showers, trade winds slowly coming back. It's going to be quite breezy this weekend. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. Thank you very much, Guy. Time now for a look at what's been on the feeds all year long. Google has released its annual year in search data, showing that in 2020, Americans were interested in everything from the election results, obviously, to how to make sourdough <laughs> bread. Nancy Chen takes a look at the top trends. With trillions of searches each year, Google knows what's on everyone's mind. Why was searched more than ever? 2020's top trending searches reveal both the obvious. Election results and coronavirus. And the unexpected. Why were chainsaws invented? In this pandemic year, many Americans in lockdown encountered new challenges. Molly Vandenberg is Google's trends expert. You have how to cut men's hair at home, how to color your hair at home, and also how to wash your hands. Also, where to buy toilet paper, where to buy face masks. Virtual field trips provided families with much needed escapes. And sourdough's popularity rose to new heights. I've found myself falling in love with sourdough. Actually, I have, I have nothing. I have. I have nothing to do. And in case you forgot, 2020 actually began before the pandemic. Oh, baby, when you talk like that. Shakira was the top trending musical artist, thanks to her headlining halftime show at the Super Bowl. Crash into the wall. Into and race car driver Ryan Newman topped the athletes list after its horrific crash at the Daytona 500. He went on to talk about what the accident meant to him and how he was going to react as a result. People continued to be interested in him as a topic. The top three how to help search trends were for Australia fires, Black Lives Matter, and the coronavirus. There's so much empathy and a lot of good in the world, and people are looking for ways to help. Offering some inspiration for what we might Google in the new year. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. In a lot of ways, it really was refreshing to see that people looked for things that were not coronavirus mm -hmm. and not the election. I just like. Yeah, that wasn't the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. Other things did happen. Although, did you get into the whole baking quarantine thing? No, my quarantine hobbies were like uh, home building, right. like tools and stuff. Um, I probably did at some point do the search for Shakira and J-Lo <laughs> after the Super Bowl halftime show. So we, we definitely knocked that, that off the list. That was a fantastic one. <laughs> That's right. And you know what makes me feel really old, Ian? Is it this? Home Alone is turning 30 oh. this year. I know. So to celebrate, Disney Plus hired food artist Michelle Wibowo to create a four by five foot gingerbread replica of the wow. McAllister home. Now the sweet creation took 300 hours to make. It includes 63 trees, 33 windows, 
14 pizza boxes, and 6 lamp posts. There are also scenes from the 1990 movie featuring those funny burglars, Harry and Marv, and of course Kevin's Treehouse. Home Alone is now streaming on Disney+. 300 hours to make and only 13 minutes to eat. And we still don't know the question, the answer to the question everyone's been wondering all these years. What did Kevin's parents do as like jobs? To, right, to have that beautiful mansion house. like that. Mm -hmm. right, exactly. Mm -hmm. We'll figure that out around the same time that the uh, gingerbread house gets here for us to eat. That's right, that's right. And check this out, you guys. A recent report says 42% of Hawaii families are struggling to make ends meet. But now we're nine months into the pandemic, that number could be much higher. As we head into the holidays, Billy V has more on how organizations are helping out. Thank you very much. Yes, we are here at Goodwill Hawaii, which is located on Baratania Street, and they are also doing uh, their best to help Alice families. We'll find out more about that in a moment. It's a partnership with Aloha United Way, and we are also talking to Lisa Kimura, who's the Vice President of Community Impact at Aloha United Way and of course you know Goodwill Hawaii very well right? We do they are a great long-standing partner with us not only have we partnered for many many years on other programs that serve the community but right now with our Alice initiative which is a collect collective of organizations that are all working together to help working families of Hawaii find ways to reduce their expenses increase their income find ways to build their assets so that it's not about living paycheck to paycheck, it's about being able to be upwardly mobile. That comes through employment counseling, that comes through job services, that comes through a lot of uh, programs and services, and Goodwill is one of our great partners in that. Now, when we're talking about Alice families, you mentioned that these are ones that are, you know, like one paycheck away from poverty, but these are working families, correct? That's right, often working multiple jobs, and half of our state, in our Alice or below before COVID, since COVID has occurred, an estimated additional 30% of families and individuals are now Alice. Now, are you seeing gifts to uh, support the Alice initiative, like uh, an effort to build Hawaii's economy, strengthen families following the pandemic? Are you seeing that? We are, and it's really important that people understand that it's not just about serving people today, but we have to plan a path forward. Mm -hmm. And the Alice Initiative is all about moving upstream, as they say, to the root causes of what's happening, to be able to change things long term for people so that they are no longer living paycheck to paycheck, but can find a way to be more stable. Do you think that we're looking too far forward into the future when the pandemic is kind of in the here and now? You know, we're always going to have situations that come up, and right now what's laying the groundwork for the future needs to be addressed. And we need to start thinking about how those impacts are going to be felt in the future. And if we don't act now and we don't start thinking about how we're going to come out of this, it's going to be a much more challenging situation to face later. All right, now if you want more information about how you can uh, help Alice families, go to goodwillhawaii.org. And also, there are several ways that you can get a hold of the Aloha United Way. Absolutely. One really great way for people that are in need right now is to call 211. And 211 is serviced by specialists who can help you connect to government, nonprofit, other resources, services statewide. It's a free program, it's totally confidential. Just call 211. The other way is to visit us online at auw.org. And for those that have the means and the resources, Donations right now are greatly in need to help support families. All right, if we've gone a little bit fast for you, don't forget we'll put this interview online also at hawaiianewsnow.com. I'm Billy V for This Is Now. All right, thank you very much, Billy. You can catch that interview and more on how to help by going to the Sunrise section of our website, hawaiianewsnow.com. Uh, this afternoon, just about an hour from now, we are expecting a press conference with Governor David Ige, uh, the first press conference that he's had in, a, in several weeks, and he's uh, expected to be talking about potential budget cuts, but potential furloughs for state employees. That's right. The pandemic has, you know, financially impacted the state, so the governor is finding all these ways to trim the budget. So we have several sources saying that he will be announcing furloughs for most state employees. We're hearing it maybe two times a month. So we will have that 1.30. Check your H&N digital platforms for that press conference. We will be carrying it live.